Okay, I'm here with James Dayton, Principal Analyst from Forrester. Yeah. Is that your official title? Principal Analyst, yeah. All right, and uh, one of the areas that you cover in most depth is is cloud computing, and you're, you've been doing quite a bit about that. Yeah. One thing I'd be interested in hearing is, you've been doing this for a little while, is over the last year, how has the conversation changed when you go and talk with people who are learning about the cloud? Has there been a lot, are people more confused now with everything being tagged cloud, less confused? Where, where are people at? There's definitely been sort of an, uh, a rise and a fall in that regard. So we definitely saw at the beginning of this year, lots of questions about what is it? I'm confused, I don't get it. Um, then we started to see this sort of recognition now as the summer started coming in. Of, okay, now I get it. And now that I get it, what can I do? Um, and so that's been, that's sort of where the conversation is right now is there's a fair amount of customers we talk to who have done experimentation in the cloud and are now turning towards having a strategy and sort of figured out, well, I can do that there. Okay, so let's just do that. Um, to other companies that are still just experimenting. So we're not, we're definitely not in a point where it's, where it's uh, established, but we're in a place where it's no longer this complete unknown. Uh, but it's, we still, I still spend more time telling people about the categorization and the definition and helping them understand what is not a cloud um, than, it, than helping them with their, the specifics of their strategy. And do you have, a, say, a handful or more of examples when, when you say, people say, well, what could it do for me? You say, well, look at XYZ company. What yeah. they did was, who are some of the people you use for that? Yeah, so a lot of them we, we can't name. So a lot of the people that really have a strategy now have gone dark. They're like, don't use our name. We have a strategy, but we think it's a differentiator for us. And that's mm -hmm. why they won't say anything. So it's not so much that they aren't far enough along that they don't want to talk about it. It's that they're far enough along that they now know this can benefit their business. And they just don't want their competitors to know. So one of the really big online uh, efforts that's, that's take, it's about to launch, it's going to launch in about a month or so, comes from one of these kinds of companies. And there's kind of three things people have found. And we're going to report this in a new document called Emerging Best Practices for Cloud Computing. And the big three are, if you want to do test and dev far more cost effectively, you do it in the cloud. Um, you know, there's obviously only certain types of applications you could do that with, but that's absolutely job one. It's the first thing you should do in the cloud. The and second, this is for small, medium business as well as large corporations? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's probably more effective for big corporations okay. because they can get just so many more projects done at once than they, than they can now. For small, medium, it makes sense, but you kind of have to know a little bit more what you're doing. So it's a more sophisticated developer that does it. Um, the second big thing we found for sure is organizations can take short-term web promotions and more marketing efforts and drop them into the cloud. Because there's no more of this, um, you know, let's find a budget, let's do the business plan, let's fit, get some capital allocated. No, it's like, got an idea, pop it into the cloud, see if it works, if it works, we'll build a business case based on the evidence we found, and off we go. Um, and that's really, really effective. So we're seeing a lot of companies do that. You know, the one on ones I point to a lot is Wendy's International. Um, so Wendy's fast food stores had this promotion for a 99 cent menu. And they said, well, I wonder if we can get a lot of people excited about this by doing an auction of things that are clearly worth more than 99 cents, but let's auction them off for 99 cents. And they got a huge audience in no time who wanted to participate in that. So that was a really good example to bring up. And then the third is harder, which is trying to figure out what applications get triggered by revenue. They belong in the cloud. Because if you can keep them pretty much doing nothing in the cloud or have a zero footprint in the cloud until revenue, and then you can have as big a footprint as you want as long as it covers the revenue that's coming in and it's profitable to do so, that's a perfect fit. And we point to Animoto as the publicly available example for that. There's a lot of enterprises that are doing this who won't say, but Animoto is a great one. You, know, you send them your photos, you give them your credit card, and only then do they trigger their systems that convert your photos into a music video. Um, and that's a really excellent example of cloud. Cool. And now, um, what do you see as far as this, the private cloud versus public cloud? Do you tell people, <laughs> don't bother with the private cloud? Do you tell them that's a great first step? Do you say it yeah. all depends? Well, we, we very much askew the term private cloud. And the reason we do is because what's private? Um, that's a really, really nebulous concept. So we ask them to concentrate more on the actual deployment. And then within that deployment, what are you trying to accomplish? So we talk about internal cloud, hosted cloud, and public cloud. Public cloud's fairly obvious what that is. It's clearly multi-tenant and all the tenants are other companies. Hosted cloud is where you ask a service provider to set up a dedicated cloud for you, manage it for you, and allow the multi-tenants to be different business units inside your company. Uh, 
internal cloud is also fairly obvious. It's in your data center protected by your walls. So in the first and the third case, it's pretty clear what you're getting yourself into. One's the security you control, one's very much a shared responsibility. The middle is, we think, a greater opportunity than, than the internal cloud because hosting companies can do cloud management for you much more cost effectively than you could do internally. And when pe people say private cloud, we have to sort of figure out which one are you talking about. So it would be more of a, it, the difference would be the hosted, it wouldn't be multi-tenant, it would be something they would, uh, it's just an outsourced model, basically? It's an outsourced model with cloud bursting capability. So you say, I want a cloud that's 60 servers, for example. So they'll set that up, they'll manage it for you, and you got no CapEx, but you get all the benefits of multi-tenancy uh, within your own company. And then if you want to grow that um, during the Christmas season by 20 more servers, you can do that because a hoster can simply just add additional servers on that you pay for or can burst you into their multi-tenant environment, depending on what your security model is for doing so. So it's a very cost-effective way to get that cloud value proposition without dedicating capital and without dedicating admins to try and figure this out. Do you see the private cloud as a, uh, sorry, now I'll get it back to my terms, internal <laughs> cloud as a, a uh, a transitionary stage to a hosted model. Do you think in the end it will be 80% will be out hosted out, 20% internal? Or do you think it all depends? Yeah, well, so I'm one of those people that believes that there's no black and white here. Um, what I think is more true is that enterprises will see cloud implementations as another tool in the toolkit. And because it's never an all fit or all not fit circumstance. So if you think about, you know, there's going to definitely be organizations that will have a portion of their data center as an internal cloud. But there's going to be a lot of things that just don't fit there. Things that you really still want to have a dedicated hardware or dedicated to a particular business unit or application. So you're not going to put there. Hosted cloud is a very nice sort of interim offering there where you don't have the skills to do it, but you really want it, that value, so use it for that purpose. Again, fits some circumstances, doesn't fit others. Public cloud's exactly the same way. There's every organization can point to a percentage of its applications that you don't really care about the level of security, but boy, you want the economics associated with that. And so we have to look at this as a portfolio decision and which parts of your portfolio fit where. So it'll be more of an a la carte type of a deal? Yeah, yeah. we call that strategic right sourcing. And I did a report called Hollow Out the Moose, and Moose is Forrester's term for maintenance and ongoing operation of systems and equipment, basically the stuff that's already running in your data center. Mm -hmm. And strategic right sourcing says, what part of this am I, if I, am I totally differentiating by running myself and affects the profit of my business? You're probably going to always keep that in-house. You might put it on a cloud, you might not, but you'll probably run it yourself. Um, then there's things that they're important to your business, but you don't do any diff do it any differently than any other company, and you're not adding any value to it. And it's not a core competency of yours to run it. That's a candidate to do some some other way. Could be SaaS, could be run it on a cloud, could be get to do it as a managed service. Excellent. Well, James Staten, thank you so much. I look forward to checking in again with you in the future. Always a pleasure. <laughs>